And a Merry Christmas to everyone. Now, I want to start out this video with an actual funny anecdote from the last video I made last year on this, because Christmas does tend to come around once a year. It's the funny thing, because last year, a very angry German person posted very rude comments on my video last year, which was great. It absolutely made my day. I mean, he was just going off. I mean, apparently he wasn't having a very good, he wasn't having a very good Christmas that year. I don't know. Maybe he didn't get a, a Tannenbaum. I don't know. I, I'm not too sure about that, but I just thought it was hilarious but this is the 2013 christmas video as i mentioned in my last video what is this i just like to showcase the christmas presents i get each year and it's not to show off like some people always like to claim i think that's what the old german man like to claim but it's more even for myself and for my family so we can see the gifts we exchange because personally i like seeing gifts that people got even if it has nothing to do with me even if it's not my family like, for example, Jeff at Cutlery Lover, I like watching his Christmas videos sometimes because he gets some very interesting things. And I just like the whole gift-giving idea. And it really is better to give than to receive. I gave some very interesting gifts this year. And when I saw everyone's face light up, I, I got a big smile on my face. So without further ado, we're going to... It's so random this year that you are both going to be questioning my age and sexuality at the end of this video. And I'm very thrilled about that because... Anytime I can make people question that, I always get a little excited myself. Speaking of age, I am a 23-year-old man this year. This is my 23rd Christmas, and what is the most appropriate thing for a 23-year-old man to get? Of course, Legos. I mean, that, that obviously, Legos. Now, this might require a little explanation. <laughs> of course it does. Um, I mentioned last year that I wanted the Lego Advent Calendar after watching Stuart Ashen over at Ashen's channel, who is absolutely hilarious. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Uh, if Chef Excellence was here, he would comment on how excellent this Lego set is. But he had an Advent Calendar of Legos last year, and it was, it was actually pretty good terrible well not terrible it was just so generic he had a star wars one and every year it was like a crappy or not every year every day it was like a crappy star wars uh spaceship that he would get every every day and uh it, it started getting really funny how, you know how mundane the things were and i thought that would be fun to get the advent calendar where you open up one each day until christmas you start on the first of december which is my birthday so that would be a good gift for that uh and, and you know you get a little gift each day and it gets funny because some of them even the bad ones are pretty funny because you get a good chuckle out of that well apparently somebody overheard that and they thought that i wanted to get some legos so absolutely i got some legos here and what's cool about these is they both make three different things you've got the air and you've got the land here and if you had the sea you'd have navy seals no but you have these three things that you can make here we've all seen legos they're amazing you never outgrow legos anybody that tells you that uh you will just didn't have a childhood maybe they're michael jackson i'm not sure i can't speak on those things but what do the people on this channel like i know because i happen to run the channel i, I do sometimes like to um think what people like and of course every year you have to get at least one zippo of course we've all seen these boxes before now what is the zippo this is one of those ones that everybody seems to have yet i i it's just one that i never picked up like you know the atomic symbol the atomic tree foil i can't remember if it's the atomic symbol or the biohazard symbol well it's it's yellow on a black background with blood spatters on there that is one that i need to get but i don't have it this isn't it however this is one of those ones that everybody seems to get and it is how I haven't had it for this long is beyond me. It is the thumbprint one. The ID thumbprint one with a barcode and it says your name. Hey, let's take a look here. Let's make sure we can focus with a little bit of holiday cheer. Ah, uh, yes, we can. Your name or ID number here. Now, what I was going to do is I was going to call the NSA up and actually get my actual thumbprint, which they no doubt ascertained from some sort of styrofoam beverage container that I threw out. But I imagine they're busy this year with all those terrorist letters to Santa Claus that they have to screen, so I didn't want to bother them. So I just got this generic Zippo here with a somebody's generic thumbprint. No, it isn't actually mine, unfortunately, because... I didn't want to put the NSA out of their way. I imagine they're busy. Oh, yeah. Also watching the connects on the Xbox One to make sure you're not doing anything devious when you're calling everybody nubcakes and telling them what kind of sexual relationships you had with their mom over Xbox Live. They want, as long as they don't hear the word bomb or anything like that, I imagine they're not going to come after you. Who knows, though? So, yes, the ID1 high-polished chrome here. It's got the thumbprint. It has the barcode. It's one that I've always liked, never got around. I wonder if this thumbprint... Huh. I guess it actually is about my size, a little bit narrow. But in case you are interested and would like one of these for yourself, I think this camera has had a little holiday cheer, but that's okay. We won't hold it against it. Uh, 2083.6. So, finger ID. Somebody crossed out that over there. No idea why. Maybe it was a price sticker. I can't speak on such things. So, there it is. There's that Zippo there. 
Okay, moving on now. Move that out of the way here. Uh, now, I get this every year, and I'm going to make sure there's no devious information on it. I'm just going to give it a quick flash so you can see what that is. Uh, it's the AAA Gold Membership, and what that is is it, in, 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 it entitles you to free roadside assistance for an entire year, and we have the Gold Membership, so they'll tow you a, quite a distance before they start charging you, like 100 miles, and you can do that up to four times a year. And those towing prices can get very expensive if you don't have something like that. So every year we get it. We It's just something that the family gets. It's not even a surprise. We get it every year, and we actually had to use it this year. Not with my vehicle. We had another vehicle that... That, um, the belt exploded on. Uh, actually, actually, you know what? I think it was my vehicle. <laughs> I can't even remember. I drive so many different cars around here. Yes, my uh, serpentine belt exploded on the vehicle uh, because the air conditioner compressor seized up and the serpentine belt exploded and we needed to get it towed to the garage. So we did use it and of course it was entirely free because of AAA. AAA also enables you to discounts at hotels and concert venues and things like that. So it's very great. I highly recommend it. So moving on here. Now, this one also requires a little bit of explanation. Again, how old am I? Doesn't matter. I'm old enough to enjoy Christmas. Now, what this is, is a choo-choo train. Yes, it's a choo-choo train. Yes, I know. I know it's a steam train. It's, in fact, in the configuration of 4-2, which I don't know how that would be, if, in case you're uh, wondering what I'm talking about there. When you're talking about a steam train, you're talking about the designation. If you have ever heard, like, a 4-4-0 locomotive, it's Wheels on the front truck, wheels on the drivetrain, wheels on the trailing truck. So this would be a 4-2. I don't know if they've ever actually had configurations like that, but now you know. For all my life, I have been interested in trains. It's just kind of one of those fascinations. I've never been interested in cars, which is weird because that's something that all men seem to be fascinated with, cars. Never been fascinated by that. In fact, I used to hang out with this girl that used to know a lot more about cars than me, and I, I actually thought it was interesting, because that's not typically what happens when you have some sort of relationship like that. Uh, but, you know, I, I just never had an interest in cars. I have had an interest in trains, though, but this ornament is very special because uh, while we were taking down the Christmas tree about three years ago, I had a lifelong ornament, a very sentimental ornament, that we decided to jettison down the hill where we throw our Christmas trees. We live in the country, so we throw the trees down the hill so they can decompose and, you know, rebuild the environment. And we threw the freaking ornament down with the tree and I was heartbroken I was very sad because I had it for what 19 20 years when it happened and I was sad now we did get one to replace it but it didn't exactly look like the ornament in this picture or in this box but uh little did I know that this year Santa found an ornament that looked just like the one that was thrown down the hill so this is very sentimental very nice nice pewter or or ornament here it actually reminds me of one of those uh pewter plates that are on the front of some of the Zippos in case you're wondering, and it has about that weight too, so that's very nice. I don't know what it says here. Uh, come on, holiday cheer camera. It says, Wallace Silversmiths. So, Wallace and your friend Gromit, thank you very much for that. Moving on now from my sister. And this is going to come back again in this video. We're going to reference this again. My sister recently moved to Hawaii, which I am thrilled about because that means she is literally the farthest place on possible, the farthest place away from me possible on planet Earth, which I absolutely, absolutely love. And what did she send me from the great Aloha State? A shot glass. I th I'm beginning to think that people think I'm alcoholic or something, and you'll see why as this video goes on. But this is not only a shot glass. This is very interesting because you'll notice that stuff at the top. What I thought was originally snow, that white stuff, it's not. It's breaking waves on the top of the uh, ocean, which is great. This has to do with the fact that I am a scuba diver officially, this, officially, efficiently. I'm a pretty efficient one, too, but officially this year. And what's cool is when you fill this up with some sort of liquid, it'll look like all these things are underwater. Well, I'm not sure about, say, Jack Daniels or some sort of darker liquid there that like, that look like you were underwater in sewage or something. But uh, if you fill it up like tequila, it might look like you're underwater, especially a nice silver tequila. Golden might look like you're swimming in something else unpleasant. But very nice shot glass here. Apparently, I had the uh, sticker there. Got to get a little goo on there. You know, if you have goo from one of those stickers, you can use Zippo fluid. I've mentioned that before, but little holiday bonus for you. Love it. Very nice shot glass. Moving on. Now, this is a GameStop receipt. There is important information on there. It's private information. But what that is, is another year subscription to their Game Edge card or whatever. And it is also, you get the magazine. Now, GameStop, I do have a problem with because they're typically not very nice when you go in there. But sometimes they are the only ones with that they... They are the only store around here that has a specific game that I want, and you have to bite the bullet. And if you can get a little money off while you're biting the bullet, hey, so be it. So I got that and uh, the subscription to the magazine for a year. 
So that's nice. I tend to get that every year. Some years it gets skipped, but I did get it this year. And speaking of holiday cheer, I don't know if you were, but I certainly was because I had to go get a drink. Non-alcoholic, though, because I don't ever like to partake in that uh, fire water. That's uh, all it does is messes with your mind. I asked Michael Bloomberg about that, and he gave me the straight jizzle. But speaking of holiday cheer... Uh, remember that thing I said where people think I'm alcoholic? Well, we're going to explain why here in a second. Not only did I get, get, the, did I get the shot glass and tongue-tied and all that shit, um, I happened to get this, which I, was very intriguing. This is uh, Jack Daniels number one, not number seven, number one, which is their special limited edition Jack Daniels. I've acquired a taste for Jack over this past year. Typically, I am a vodka drinker. I mean, no, I'm not me, not me personally. I mean, that, Michael Bloomberg would not approve. But hypothetically, I would be a vodka drinker. But during the holidays, when you're in by a nice fire, the woody taste of a nice whiskey is always something I like. And you can tell that this is not just standard Jack Daniels in a different box because it's 43% ABV or 86 proof, whereas standard Jack Daniels is 40 proof. So this is going to be good. Uh, I certainly hope. Limited edition sipping whiskey here. I certainly hope I'm going to enjoy that as much as I do standard Jack Daniels. And speaking of standard Jack Daniels, I got, I think, the world's largest bottle of Jack Daniels. Remember that uh, alcoholic thing? Yeah, not so much. Uh, yeah, 1.75 liter of Jack Daniels Old Number 7 Sour Mass Whiskey. Yes, Jack Daniels. Mmm, going to be good. Certainly hope so. Big bottle. Many drink. Good fun. Yay. I sound like Dog or whatever. How, how, how do you pronounce that internet meme with the big puffball dog? D dog? Dog? Something like that? I don't know. I can't follow the internet. I'm not quite that bright. So, moving on now. What do we have here next? Next, I am going to show you... Well, no, I'm going to save that for one more. This one is another random one, but it's absolutely perfect. I wasn't expecting this, but it is absolutely perfect. These are inked earbuds. Now, these are cheap. These are the cheap earbuds that I think work actually, actually the best. Now, I'm not an audiophile, and sometimes audiophiles really annoy me when they say, well, you know, the mids are a little drowned out, and I wouldn't put those things in my ears. If somebody put a magnet on one end and put the opposite pole of a magnet on the other end, I still would I would put them in my ears. I, I wouldn't put them. They, they really annoy me sometimes. I, I can understand an appreciation for <laughs> good audio. However, you know, I like ones that work and ones that provide me a, a, a decent sound. And these inked ones always have. I got a pair of Sonys before and they were actually pretty terrible. They had pretty much no volume. But these these cheap skull candies that you used to get at places like FYE always have uh, been good for me and I happen to break them all the time. I break them from sweat. I break them from snapping them. All sorts of different things. So it's always good to have another pair of these in my favorite color blue. Can't complain about that. Very nice little stocking stuffer here. Now, one of my personal favorites this year that was personalized to me, and this, I, to no end, I can't tell you how much I really enjoy this. Uh, I was talking on my internet forum, New York Firearms, hello members there, Merry Christmas to you all. And a while back, I was talking about AR-500 steel targets. I know I said AR in New York. I'm surprised the Gestapo hasn't broken my door down. But AR-500 steel targets, which are the ones you're going to get if you want to use a plinking target, which you put them about 10 yards out and you shoot and you get that nice ping of steel. Far more impressive than shooting paper. And trust me, paper gets dry after a while. That's why I was looking around for AR-500 steel targets. And I wanted information on them, safety and how thick they should be and what type of steel I should get and all that stuff. And I kind of went on the back burner for a while, but we had a secret Santa on New York Firearms where we each got each other um, gifts. We sent them to a random person. And I happened to get my gift a few days ago, and I waited until Christmas to open up. And I open it up, and what's in there? An absolute gem. Take a look at that. Personalized with Silver Sharpie. Merry Christmas to Darth Gamer 138 which was my name, and it was my YouTube name before this, but I gave the account to somebody, and it turned into a big disaster. So I'm SpeedDog138 now. I still use that name for my Xbox Live Gamer tag. But AR500 Steel Plate. It's heavier than a monkey's uncle, too. Uh, I'm surprised the postman wanted to carry that. So this is going to be great. I'm going to take my target stand, and I'm going to get another fairing uh, piece, plank, whatever, one by two. And I'm going to put a cross member up, and I'm going to tie it with paracord so that this thing swings freely. And I'm going to have a lot of fun pl planking it. Shame that I'm going to ruin this nice message here, though, in Sharpie. But I think he's going to forgive that, considering, well, 
it's a target. You're supposed to shoot it. So very nice. I love the message message there. Merry Christmas, Dark Game 138 from Dog Killer and Family. Love it. New York Firearms Forums. Fantastic. What this shows is he went in and he searched personally for a gift for me. Saw my thread about the, the steel targets. And I, that's just amazing. I mean, that really, that really hit home there. I absolutely love it. Moving on now. Uh, I think it's time for another Zippo, don't you? Yes. Zippo box. Gee, I've never seen one of those before. And again, this is the last Zippo this year, but it's an absolutely be beautiful one. And it's one I've wanted for a while as well. And what is it? Let's stop talking. Real Tree Camo. I absolutely love this. And I love the feel of these uh, matte ones with this paint on here. Yes, it is the feel of a standard matte Zippo, but there's just something I like about that. It's kind of a kind of like a smooth finish there. But here it is, Real Tree. Let's take a look at this camo all the way around nice leaves there this is just one design that i have wanted for a while never got as you can see it's a brass up underneath just like all of them and uh santa apparently knew that i uh, oh look the sad onion is the sad onion got a broken uh, no it's just some of the paints worn off let's take a look at the sad onion you know, i don't know i don't understand how we can be sad on christmas it's supposed to be a good day unless you're a german that commented on my video last year but yes the sad onion is there he's still intact that's just some paint that's worn off there you know even if it was broken i'm not one of those people that oh my god the seal's broken i don't care very beautiful lighter if you want the information like i always tend to give out real tree 28263 real tree ap is it an O or a Q? Either APO or APQ. So, uh, something like that. So, very beautiful. Another Zippo. Uh, I've been out of Zippo buying for a while because I've been, again, if you've heard my other videos, trying to get everything set for when we can't buy ammo anymore on January, what is it, 16th, 14th, 16th, something like that. Yes, because you're going to need to have your name on a registry, and there's no system to have that set up yet. So, yes, you won't be able to buy ammo. Now, are they probably going to postpone it or cancel it or something like that? Yes, but... As of right now, unless something has changed that I don't know about, which is weird because I just got off the phone with the uh, lawyer. Yes, the uh, lawyer that's going to be working with the Tresmans. We talked to him. I'm trying to be part of something that I can't really discuss. But uh, I just got off the phone when we had we wish each other a Merry Christmas, talked about a few things. Uh, but I still don't know if the uh, ammo registration and background check has been shot down. I knew one had been shot down. I don't know about both. But uh, that will be talked about more in January. And we're getting to the bottom of the pile here st here now, and I do always like to save the best for last. We're not quite at the end yet, but we're moving on next. Now, this is something that I've wanted for a while. I do need to talk about this, though. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist. Now, I do love Splinter Cell. It used to be an absolute day one purchase for me. However, Michael Ironside, Michael Ironside, Michael Ironside... Michael Ironside. Now, what am I talking about, Michael Ironside? There are two voice actors that I absolutely buy the games for. That's stupid to buy a game for a voice actor. Well, for me, a game is a story. If you had a story that was written, a book, a novel, and they all of a sudden changed the author, you probably wouldn't be too happy. Considering that the voice actors need to bring the story to life, I consider video game stories, and if you make a large change like that, people tend to get upset. Now, people thought it was crazy that they were upset about... Uh, uh, Michael Ironside not going to be in this Splinter Cell. But if you pulled that stuff with Metal Gear Solid, taking David Hayter away from the voice of Solid Snake, which they did, but they replaced it with Jack Bauer, Kiefer Sutherland, that's a different talk topic. If you take the voice actor away from something like Metal Gear Solid, people would flip out. Now, I flipped out about this, because Michael. S there's two voice actors that I absolutely make the game for me. Michael Ironside in Splinter Cell series, and James McCaffrey in the Max Payne series. Totally, 100% make the game couple of my favorite voice actors love them to death uh they changed the voice actor in blacklist and it actually made me not buy the game now that some people might think that's stupid but when other people actually started playing this game and they realized that uh ironside wasn't in there anymore they started realizing what i was coming at i mean when you're looking at the screen and the person talking isn't your version of sam fisher uh, you know, you tend to go a little, uh, I'm not sure about that, but I broke down because I did hear the gameplay is fantastic. I'm going to have to put the voice acting, you know, aside because they changed the voice for Grimm. They changed the voice for Sam. Yeah, whatever. I do hear it's a fantastic game though. And if you'll notice, Sam Fisher's pistol is an FN 5.7. Now, that is his iconic pistol. He's been using it since the first game and it shoots a, a non-standard caliber. It shoots 5x7x28 millimeter. Uh, not 5x7, 5.7x28mm. 
And I hear that's a very interesting uh, ca caliber to reload. It's something to do with a very sharp sp pressure spike, so it's a bit of a pain to reload. And I'm also not thrilled that you can't get the uh, law enforcement military armor piercing ammo here which is a gigantic crock, because you can just load up your own ammo with your own sort of uh, penetrator bullets for, you know, you, you could still get the performance. It's just a bunch of feel-good crap that they ban the uh, good 5.7 ammo from coming into the States. I'd love a 5.7 pistol, but it's a little expensive, and the ammo's a little expensive unless you reload. Uh, even reloading some of those bullets are kind of expensive. Uh, but the whole point is it's non-standard caliber. And speaking of non-standard calibers, this is what we call a segue. What is this? Oh, 10 millimeter auto. What is, what is that about? I don't own a 10 millimeter auto. And to be honest with you, I don't own a 10 millimeter auto and I didn't get one for Christmas. So, uh, hmm. Don't know what that's about. Not quite sure. Uh, these are 200 grain full metal jacket truncated cone rounds. 10 millimeter auto. This is what one of them looks like. If you're unaware, 10 millimeter is basically 40 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Uh, basically what happened, quick history of the 10 millimeter. Here is a 40, so you can see that I'm not joking. They're the same, except one's longer. 10 millimeter there on the right. If you're unaware, the history of the 10 millimeter very basically is... Uh, Back in the 80s, there was a very famous shootout, the Miami shootout, where officers were using 38 Special Plus P, or as agents, FBI officers, agents, whatever. And now the camera memory card, well, excuse me, internal memory ran out of holiday cheer, and I ran out of memory, so here we are back again. Now, where I left off was talking about the 10 millimeter. In the 80s, there was a shootout in Miami, Florida, where the officers, agents, what have you, were using 38 Special Plus P rounds in their revolvers. Plus P means a round, uh, round loaded to a higher pressure. Now, 38 Special Plus P is actually comparable to a 9mm round. Some of the 9mm rounds, because they have similar weight projectiles traveling at sim similar, similar speed. Man, I'm starting to get tongue-tied here. Well, they had this shootout, and the penetration wasn't great on the rounds that they were using. Now, keep in mind, this, these are old rounds. They didn't have the technologies of today. Uh, but they would bounce off windshields, apparently, and they wouldn't go through. They, they, they would not put the person down as fast as they needed to. So the FBI looked at this, and they said, instead of these 38 Special Plus Ps, what they're going to do is they need a new caliber. And it was researched, and, it was, and it, what came out of it was the 10 millimeter Auto. Which, which is a, a cult caliber, and, you know, again, I don't have any guns that shoot this, but, uh, hint, hint, uh, it, it's a bit of a cult caliber, but it, it was invented, and it was given to the FBI. Well, the agents complained after a while that the recoil was too much. They couldn't handle the recoil. The blast was too much. Now, keep in mind, these FBI agents aren't any sort of firearm enthusiasts. They just fire their qualification rounds, and that's it. They're like the NYPD, except I imagine the FBI actually occasionally hits their targets. Anyway, so the recoil was too much, so what they started doing was downloading the rounds. They, would, we, they wouldn't load as much gunpowder in the 10 millimeter case. Well, when they realized that they could get away with downloading the rounds... What th they did was shorten the case, and there you go. The 40 Smith & Wesson was born. So the 40 Smith & Wesson's father is the 10 millimeter. so therefore the 10 millimeter is basically the 40 Smith & Wesson Magnum. It's not, I mean, it's not called that, but that's actually what it is. Uh, typically, it goes in the other direction. Typically, you start with the smaller round, like the 38, and move up to the 357 Magnum. Uh, that, the reason that the 10 millimeter technically isn't called the Magnum is because it didn't go in that direction. It started as 10 millimeter and moved down to the 40. So that's the deal with that. But you can still, 10 millimeter is still a very popular caliber day. I don't, I don't want to say very popular. It's not all around ubiquitous like 9, 40, 45, but it's very, uh, it's a very cult loved caliber. In fact, I love it, uh, due to Mr. Look at this. Speaking of segue, Tom Clancy. Now, what does Tom Clancy have to do with 10 millimeter? The first time I ever heard about 10 millimeter was in a book called Rainbow Six, which is also a very popular game. It's a fantastic novel, but in it, the agents were using, uh, Heckler and Coke MP. 10s, which are Heckler & Koch MP5s and 10 millimeter, and I'm like, 10 millimeter, that's not a real caliber, he's, you know, just doesn't know what he's talking about, nonsense. Well, I did a little research, and it is true, and it, um, I learned about the 10 millimeter and what it is, and how it's different from, say, the 9 millimeter, the 40 and 45, and, and I really started getting an inkling of uh, interest in there. And now that I'm 23, I have some 10 millimeter ammo. Do I have anything to shoot it in? No, but I figured, hey, why not just get the ammo? I mean, it looks nice, right? So uh, we'll put that off to the side for a second. So 10 millimeter auto ammo. And I will tell you one thing around here. Uh, 
she ain't cheap. I'll tell you that much. Uh, but uh, I will be reloading for it again. Uh, but I don't have anything to shoot it, so why would I do that? And I didn't get anything for Christmas to shoot it, so why would I do that? Well, hmm, I guess I'm not. I'm thinly veiling something here, but we're not talking about that right now. Next, you need to come off of the stand here. So let's take you for a little ride. And we're going to look down here at this. Now, what is this? This is a rolling backpack. Now, why would I need a rolling 30-inch duffel? Well, scuba diving. Plain and simple. When we were in class and in personal experience from the dives that I've been on in Lake Champlain and the shipwreck dives, I can tell you right now that you want wheels on your gear because it is a pain when you're going up and down hills carrying lugging bags around. Well, I got this and it's going to be great. Those will fit my fins, they'll fit my regulator, they'll fit my all that stuff. Basically, it just won't fit the cylinder. It might even fit the BC in there if I really try, try to squeeze it. So this is going to be absolutely fantastic. And I, I think it's going to be totally, it's going to do me well because I have a lot of scuba dives planned for next year. I'm going to be doing the St. Lawrence Seaway. I'm going to be doing... Uh, dives around here again. I can't wait and that's really going to help me out. So that is fantastic. It was the biggest box I got this year too. Sometimes good things come in small packages. Sometimes they come in big packages. By the way, do you hear any people with, again, holiday cheer in the background? We're all having a good time here and I'm the crazy one that's off in the corner shooting these videos for you fine people. Now I think we have officially hit the bottom two of the barrel. And before I do that, let me explain. I also did get the clothes and I also got some Yankee candles, uh, which I absolutely love. I have one going right now. I have a uh, farmer's market one, so it smells amazing in here. But uh, those kind of bore people on camera. <laughs> but they're they're fantastic things. I don't appreciate them any less. But you know, some they sometimes bore people on camera. Now, what do we have next here? Uh, remember how I talked about those uh, not normal calibers? Well, like the five seven and ten millimeters. Uh, well, this is a normal caliber. It's just one that I don't own yet. And that is, what is this? This is a box of Remington Gold and Sabre in 380 automatic. Now let's take a look at what this is here. 102 grain brass jacketed hollow point, which is interesting because usually it's copper jacketed. I'm not sure what that's about, but hey, I'm not Remington. So let's take a look at one of these rounds here. Here we have 102 grain brass jacketed hollow point in 380 automatic. Oh, I'm telling you, this camera has had too much holiday cheer. Anyway, I'm sure you've seen what a round looks like before. This is what the hollow point looks like before. And on the back, it says... Oh, it's the world's slowest fo focusing round. It says 380 Auto RP Remington Pistol. It also looks like it has a uh, primer sealant in there. Yes, it does, to keep moisture out, which I suppose is good for a uh, self-defense round here. But I don't own any, any caliber... I don't own any firearms in 380. Actually, I'm going to get this round back out because I'd like to show you something with this round for people unfamiliar with it. There we are. I'm going to take my Glock 26 here, and we're going to pop the mag out, and we're going to take one of these 9mm. These are Spear Gold Dot 124 Grain Plus P Gold Dot Hollow Points. Uh, if you've never seen these two, 9mm and 380 are the same diameter bullet. Uh, you have the 124 grain bullet here, 102 grain on the left. Uh, 9 millimeter is simply 2 millimeters longer. But it's not the case where this would be the magnum. The 9 millimeter is not a magnum of the 380 because 9 millimeter is actually a tapered case. The case actually goes a little bit in as you get closer to the bullet. Most people don't know that, so you can't use the same dies for 380 and 9. Some people do it, yeah, some people fudge with all sorts of things like that. But technically, it's not any sort of magnum thing like that. So 380, also known as James Bond's caliber, he carries in the Walther PPK. Now, I didn't get a Walther PPK this year, uh, unfortunately. Uh, it's not that I asked for one. It's just, no, I didn't get a PPK, so don't think that. I know some people know that I am a Walther fan. But what I did get is something else from Germany. Oh, it's Sig Sauer. What is this box? almost looks like a Glock box. Maybe there's a Glock inside it. What could this be? I don't know. Let me put it over here. Let me lift that off to the side there. Off to the side there. Okay, that's it. Oh, goodness. What is that? Well, this is a Sig Sauer P238 in 380 Auto. And this particular version is the Rosewood Grip Tribal version. Now, what is all that about? Well, this is what it's about. Let's take a look at the gun here. Safety check first. Do it off camera so I don't ruin anything. Okay, we're good. Now, 
six hour p238 you better focus on this because if you know what's good for you there it is p238 now look at this rainbow oh my goodness can you say of questionable sexuality i certainly can't because i absolutely love the way this looks this reminds me of the spectrum zippos which here is one here's the playboy one i absolutely love this color coloration here this kind of like oil stain looking thing if you dropped some motor oil on a uh puddle in the rain it would look just like that and i love this coloration and a lot of people like this coloration with zippos i guess there it's manly but you're not supposed to have color on a gun it's supposed to be tactile yes right i know i've heard all the excuses but you'll notice this this rainbow stuff looks like what these controls look like which i think is absolutely fantastic now you're going to find the big scary point of contention if you're not comfortable with your manhood you might want to look away now the gun has pink on the top oh Head for the hills, hide your kids, hide your wife, because pink means you're gay. Well, actually, that's not what it means, apparently, because when people are actually asked, and they're not just trying to be internet tough guys, I only use black guns, and guns aren't supposed to be colorful, blah, 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 I heard it all before. When you're actually talking to people that can actually, you know, respect things, I have talked to many, many, many men about this particular gun, because I knew that I was going to get it, and every single one of them says it's absolutely beautiful, despite having that pink on the top. Now, to explain, this is supposed to be a tribal uh, tribal kind of thing, like, uh, you know, I, I think of Hawaii, I mentioned that shot class earlier, and I mentioned my sister living in Hawaii, now I, I think of that tribal colors where, you know, you have one part of the rainbow here, it goes into the pinkish color on the top, and you have the other side of the rainbow here, it goes from uh, kind of a pink to kind of a reddish color, which I think is absolutely beautiful. I don't think that it's, you know, necessarily pink, because that's always supposed to be a chick gun. I think it's pink because it's supposed to be kind of tribal colored, which I think is amazing. Because when I go to Hawaii, the first thing I'm going to do is buy a nice Hawaiian shirt, and those come in all sorts of crazy colors. Um, I just, I absolutely love the way this gun looks, and it's my first metal-framed handgun. Uh, it is an aluminum alloy frame here, and if you'll notice, one thing that I really like about this is the, the slide is called natural stainless. I don't know if it'll come through on the camera, but it's not totally silver. Uh, you see how this is gold here? Uh, it kind of looks a little bit more like that. It's called natural stainless, so it's it's not silver. It's There's actually a gold tint going on in this slide, which I think is one of the things that makes this. It's beautiful. Add to that this beautiful um, hard-coated black anodized frame here and these rosewood grips, these real rosewood grips here, and these rainbow controls. I absolutely love everything about it. Here's what it looks like on the other side. Goes from kind of pink to a gold and the red there. Got the uh, rainbow uh, magazine release. Cutest little magazine in the world. Oh my god, maybe I maybe I did pick the right gun. Maybe I am turning into a feminine person. Six hour 380 auto here. It is a six plus one, which makes Andy Dandy happy. Even though I could fit an extra round in there. Even though I could carry seven plus one. Uh, if I should happen to carry this. Uh, 7 plus 1 is the limit in New York because otherwise you're dangerous, but this is a 6 plus 1. Rack slide back for you here so you can see it. It is a lock breech design, which I will make a video on that because some people still don't know what I mean by that, versus blowback. It's a lock breech design, which most of these little 380 pocket guns, because it ain't very big, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the magazine's about the size of the Zippo, so you got six whole rounds in the size of a Zippo. Uh, most of these pocket guns are of the blowback variety, and this is lock breech. I prefer lock breech. So, that's nice. Now, I could have got the PPK, but I went in the store and I happened to handle one of these, and I just fell in love with it, because this is my first <clears throat> 1911 style, where you have single action only, a, a metal frame, it takes down kind of like a 1911, it just doesn't have the grip safety. Um, so I, I'm still new to the whole 1911 world myself, but I, I did want a thinner gun than the old 26 here for carry. As you can see, it's considerably different, much smaller uh, for things like summer carry and uh, just so I can slip in my pocket and things like that. I did want some, and, and I, I held one of these, and it just feels, again, the whole Apple product thing, when you feel it, just feels really, really well made. It's got some weight to it. Uh, this metal frame here just feels fantastic. The magazine is just very well built. Love it. Can't wait to get some rounds through it. Unfortunately, 380 is actually quite expensive. The ammo is quite expensive. I will. I do plan on reloading that. And uh, they didn't have a full metal jacket. They only had the defensive rounds. So I won't be shooting too many of those till I get some FMJs. But I know what I will be shooting at. 
this fantastic thing. Remember that? So, yeah, the Sig Sauer P238. Oh, let's not forget this, too. On the top here, you can see them glowing right now. Meprolite Night Sights. These are my first, this is my first gun with Night Sights. They have Tritium in there, H3. I used to have, well, actually, I still do have watch faces like the Luminox watches that have Tritium vials in there. They will light up no matter what. They don't need charged in the sunlight. They will glow at night because they are radioactive. And these lights are brighter than hell. <laughs> even in not so dark, even in kind of bright, they light up amazingly. In dark, they're almost like a flashlight. These Meprolite night sights are fantastic. They are rebranded as SIG lights, but uh, they are marked as Meprolites. So, SIG, I don't know what you're doing there. But this is my first SIG, and I'm thrilled to go out and shoot. I can't wait. Other things in the box are the holster and the locks that nobody uses and stuff like that. But that's it for this year. So, I certainly hope that everybody got what they wanted this year, because I know as I certainly did... Was there anything that you got this year that blew you away? Did you get what you wanted? Did you not get what you wanted? Are you hoping for some? Are you going to go out and catch some of the uh, after Christmas deals? I know I have to get a few things for uh, mounting this uh, steel target that I have there. Uh, I got to go get some 380 Auto uh, FMJ ammo. And uh, we have to figure out what that 10 millimeter was about. Uh, you know, I got to got to question that. Figure out what that 10 millimeter was about. Uh, if anybody has any ideas on that, maybe they can put, put that in the comments. But, uh, I, I did fantastic Christmas. I hope everybody in your family uh, had a good time. I hope you had fun giving, because I certainly did. I hope you had fun time receiving. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. So that's another year in the books. Uh, tell me what you think. Would you be man enough to carry something like this? Or no, you just can't handle that. Uh, so yeah, any thoughts? Again, just have a wonderful Christmas. Have a wonderful New Year's. I don't know if I'll post again before New Year's. I hope so. But uh, take it easy, guys. And uh, Merry Christmas again.